You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 3rd, 2023. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we would nominate friend of the pod 10 grain of mock paper scissors for a Kofax Award for helping to coin the moniker Millie Brazili for George Santos if Kofax Awards were still a thing. It's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. You know what? It occurs to me a lot of people might not know what the Kofax Award is. So tune in this summer sometime for a No Fair Remembering Stuff episode on the rise and not quite fall of the liberal blogosphere. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of No Fair Remembering Stuff, remember that we now have three, count them, three podcasts. This one, the Professional Love Podcast you are listening to right now. Then there's No Fair Remembering Stuff, which drops every Tuesday, except for the last Tuesday of every month, when we're doing Science Fiction University. Hey, Blue Gal, does that mean there's a new episode of Science Fiction University up right now? There sure is. Uh, And we dropped that episode just before Hulu announced that Kindred, one of the shows we do like and we reviewed, has been canceled. Oh, Cool. They're shopping it around. They're shopping it around. They are. And we're hoping they're going to find a buyer. But you know what this reminds me of, Blue Gal? What does it remind you of, Drift Glass? The Science Fiction University episode we did back in 1996 on what a promising series Space Above and Beyond was. Uh, and then it turned out to be it was canceled in 1997. And then, everyone remember this, was our infamous <laughs> 2002 Science Fiction University episode, no. which predicted that a little show called Firefly would soon be the hottest thing on TV and would run for at least five seasons. At least. And then, of course, in 1969... The first or second episode of Science Fiction University, we were confident that this Star Trek thing, which was wagon train in space, had really caught its second wind. And with a powerful uh, studio like Paramount behind it, it would it was safe from cancellation. Would run for another decade at least. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep, that's our history. Just, just killed... like just like uh, all of those podcasts we did, they that none of that happened. We didn't none podcast of that happened. back then. None of that happened. None of that and, happened. And but you know we are series killers. I mean we are. <laughs> so you well, know, just... I do. I also want to mention that we were on a fourth podcast this week. I know we were on Ooh. the Bill Show, which is a show out of Australia, and Bill is just a fantastic host, and it's always a load of laughs when we go on his podcast. It's a hoot. It's a hoot, and it and it we'll got be going swear- on again. You know, it gets kind of sweary. I'm, oh, I'm he gets kind of sweary, but we have yeah, a good time. We do. And you know uh, what? And we'll be back on his po- podcast again. If you have a podcast and you're looking for a guest, we don't have guests on our podcast because that's all I can do to keep Drift Glass's voice edited. But yes. um, if you want to have us on a guest as a guest, we'll do it. Just ask us. Sure. In fact, send, um, us, send us a clip of your show and, and let us know and we'll do it. Next week, I'll be on the Brad blog. Because uh, it's State Brad. of the Union, right? Right, State of the Union. I'll we'll be on the next day. It's supposed to be me and Digby, um, and that should be fun. Again, it gets a little sweary. Some I know. I think Brad broadcasts. Brad overall. broadcasts, so I don't so, think you'll be allowed to swear. Damn. So I'll get them all out of my system this podcast. How's that? The one consistently invested in retirement plan you and I have is the swear jar. Oh God, yeah, we're sitting pretty. Let's talk about the subject of this week's podcast. A certain podcaster out there named Keith Olbermann threw down a gauntlet this week about conservative media having so many outlets. He's He's been on a, a rant about this now for quite some time. Yes. And he's right. Factually and he's right. correct. Yeah. He's actually correct. Yes. That MSNBC is failing. The MSNBC is not your friend. No, no. And the uh, corporate managers of that station are... You know, proverbially throwing jello at the wall to see what sticks and f- trying to figure out what to do and hiring the wrong people to be on air. And all that jello tends to be center right. Yeah. 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 Trying to 
peel off people from Fox or I don't even know what they're trying to do. Keep advertisers happy. I got no idea. Bring viewers from the independent wing. I, it just, it makes no sense. You have a brand, be a liberal television show. No, can't do that. Cannot yeah, do that. Can't possibly do that can't because do that. our taxes will go up. Well, and, and Senor Oberman makes a, uh, made a valid point. It, he beat it with a sledgehammer, which I think is what Winston Churchill said about using words. Just give him a great big whack about, you know, the hysteria on the right about cancel culture. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. Keith Olbermann listed off two or three hundred outlets oh, that yeah, a lot conservatives of had in on radio, on television and podcasts and books in newspapers. And he missed a whole bunch that I was listening to. And then, yeah. of course, you come up short when it comes to uh, the liberal people and what the liberals get out of this. And before you say the ratings prove that CNN and MSNBC are now irrelevant, well, I agree with you, but I ask you this, what has replaced them? The far right has Fox, and Fox Business, and Newsmax, and The First, and One America News, and Daily Wire, and The Blaze, and Joe Rogan, and literally 100 streaming shows, and other 24-7 feeds, and the left has... We are here, we are here, we are here! Well, yeah. (laughs) And you were you wanted to say a few words directly to Mr. Olbermann. Yeah, about well, that. first of all, you know, I I appreciate the fact that Keith Olbermann is doing the show he's doing. I listen practically every day. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, he could be using his MSNBC sports money and just living in some Southeast Asian country at a very nice hotel and not in the fight. Right. He doesn't have to do this. No, he's got plenty of money. And so doing this and, and ranting and so forth is uh, is I'm grateful for it. Let me put it that way. Uh, I'd like and maybe he can't do this because he's with iHeartRadio, which ah. is not a nice company. I'm just going to no, say that. They're not. Uh, but, you know, a little shout out. Not it doesn't have to be to me. It does not have to be to me. But, you know, shouting out to Digby and some other like like, for instance, I currently watch a lot more of Hal Sparks than I watch of MSNBC. Yeah, same Because it's more current and it's liberal. Uh Yep. And he's on every day except Sunday. And he's actually shouting back at conservative media. Yes. And correcting it. Mm -hmm. He has been on the absolute fakeness of the Hunter Biden laptop story now for months and months and months. For years, really. Yeah, Yeah, Hal, Hal Sparks has. And and just there is so much you could do in a positive way, Keith, to elevate what is out there in terms of liberal media. Mm-hmm. And I also think that the reason that cable news is dying, deservedly so, is they failed us. They did. They had a shot. The, the Trump the Trump years showed their asses to us uh-huh. that they really don't care about this country. Nope. And so. Shrug shoulders, you know, they don't care. And so they lost their audience as a result. And you and I, I mean, congratulations, by the way, Keith Olbermann, on your one millionth download in six months. We've had 6.5 million downloads of this podcast in 13 years. (laughs) And most of those are Drift Glass's late mother. Yes. Back when she was here. She'd print off my blog and put it on the fridge with a magnet. (laughs) You know, I thought that was cute. It was adorable. Anyway, I... I'm not yelling at Keith Olbermann. I'm just saying we are here. You know, the, there is an effort to uh, do this, to to provide vocabulary, to provide media. And it's not just us. Um, if you listen to any of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of conservative media outlets that you hear Keith Olbermann berating today, which mm-hmm. is fine, um, you'll notice that they all sound the same and are on on message they're on and, and they're I talking that, to each other i know that we're not and the, the left has never marched in the same direction or yeah you know, even it's, it is hurting cats as they yeah, say it is right? it always has been and that's just yeah. sort, of what, sort of what we accept but we all kind of get that there's you know the bad guys over there yeah and we know who they are and we've been calling them out we we all have these archives we all have these sort of deep wells of of commitment and understanding about what's wrong with this country Mm -hmm. That nobody who runs corporate media wants to tap because we would embarrass the people who are currently on their air. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there is this, uh, I noted with you, Blue Gal, the, the, the interesting crossover that I've noticed between the Bulwark people and the Crooked Media people. Mm-hmm. And how they just are starting to show up in each other. Nobody outside of those two ecosystems is showing up inside those ecosystems. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're but they're, they're appearing on each other's show to have, quote unquote, a conversation. Right. right? And, they're, you know, oh, <laughs> and Sarah promoting Longwell. each other's shows. Here's Sarah Longwell, who does polling for Bulwark. And we're going to have her talk about this. And here's Tim Miller, who does this. And here's and it's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, except for the fact that it's... Uh, and this is going to sound really old school, but it sounds weirdly like um, Blog Girl Amnesty Day from the yeah. old days of blogging, yeah. which is when the A-listers, as you know, seven or eight people who were doing most of the traffic, who got most of the revenue, decided they didn't want to deal with anybody else. Mm-hmm. They just mm-hmm. dropped everybody else from their blog rolls and, and only linked to each other. And that strategy failed spectacularly over the long run because yes, there did. was no support system for the second, third, or fourth tier people who were all very talented. And who they, were also the audience for those big name blogs. Right. I mean, that was the other, they just shit on their audience. Yes, they did. And and that is what I think cable news has done. That's what MSNBC has done. And, and, and it's not about Rachel Maddow leaving. It. No. I know that he has a particular ax to grind, and I don't uh, behoove anyone having I, an obsessive interest or a thing <laughs> because I live yeah. with somebody who's got lots of obsessive interests. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, yeah. that, that, and you know, I just put my knitting down too. So everyone, yeah. thank you. The knitting's down. <laughs> mm-hmm. We all have our obsessive interests, so that's fine. But this is about, uh, it's not about Rachel Maddow leaving. No. It's about deciding what your priorities are. Yes. And MSNBC has decided what their priorities are. Yeah. And that's, it's, and, and the thing is, nobody knows what their priorities are at this point because their behavior is so They want scattered. everything. They want a yeah. little of everything. They want a big, wide, center-right morning Joe lane in the morning. Right. Which is why they gave him an extra hour rather than mm-hmm. pro- program anyone else. They get, and in the middle of the day, they don't care. You know, Andrea Mitchell can, you know, wrestle with the English language and lose every hour on the and hour. And try cares. to stay awake. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's clear they don't have any commitment to us. They're not interested in us. They're interested in their own brand and their own circle of friends and promoting their own circle of friends. And it's clear that the evenings, starting um, with Nicole Wallace, is about rehabilitating recently former Republicans. Mm-hmm. You cannot watch Nicole Wallace for more than 20 minutes without seeing Charlie Sykes there. Right. And if, right. if that's all they are, that's fine. If if this is simply the the shadow Republican government... <laughs> Waiting in the wings for Donald Trump to die, to die, and, and, and yeah. everyone else to sort yeah. of sober up and go, man, we should. We and should isn't go it interesting to- that that's come out this week? I mean, yeah. Keith Olbermann talked about it, but other people have talked about it too. The there the whole Bush wing of the Never Trump Republicans is just waiting for that heart attack to hit at the golf course. Yeah, and, and that's, you know that's, that's what they're plan. doing. Yeah. And that plan, ha- but that plan has nothing to do with us, right? It has it. We're not. We don't factor into it. We're not part no. of it. We're just there to, you know, and we're there because there's no other source. There's no other place to go. There's no other place. Air America crashed and burned. Every Mm -hmm. other media outlet crashed and burned. Mm -hmm. And so you still have these pockets of activist, intelligent, thoughtful people out there trying real hard and getting absolutely no support from the wealthy donors or from. Well, even a mention, I mean, or even a, you know, an an acknowledgement that, that what, we're doing is speaking to an audience. Right. And it, honestly, it is a scarcity mentality. Mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. that. I yeah. believe yeah. the people who, who I mean, Crooked Media came out of the gate, and this isn't to back on them, came out of the gate, Barack Obama's on our honor. Okay, well, now we have an audience of a million people. Boom, right, right there. Right. Now we have merch and we have commercials. We have more merch and more commercials. And we can buy people who will do polls for us and become a media corporation very fast. Mm-hmm. Bulwark yeah. comes out of the gate going, all these former Republicans who used to work for the Weekly Standard are going to go over here and we're going to get a large donations from people that we don't talk about to get us started. And then we have a media corporation mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll talk to each other and we'll promote each other, et cetera. That's fine. But there is a sense that there just aren't, there isn't enough pie to go around. Right. And, right. And our people are our people mm-hmm. and we need mm-hmm. to take care of them. And there is no larger cause. Everyone else's job is to support what we do. Yeah. And if you yeah. listen to 
again, I'm not bagging on either of them on this episode. I will in future episodes, though. Um, <laughs> if you listen to the first, you know, three minutes of any Lincoln Project podcast, we need to. We're the army who are going to fight for democracy. Join the union, and they have a. You know, here's here's how you join our particular army to save democracy. Mm-hmm. Listen, mm-hmm. listen to uh, uh, Crooked Media. Join our army to save democracy. They're not the same army. They're just gathering different groups of volunteers they're, together. They're to gathering do a mailing things. list that they can sell too. I mean, and, and there's no coordination among them. You know, if you mm-hmm. really want to <laughs> save the country, first of all, there is a uh, democracy movement in all 50 states called the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And if you just stop trying to brand yourself as removed from them, or as some, I'm over here on the on the fringe. I'm an independent. You know, this the, the bulwark brands itself as a safe area for. For, you know, we don't do tribal stuff. Well, one of the tribes is your former party and they're destroying the country. Mm -hmm. So how's about you you partner up with the people who are not trying to do that and just quit trying to steer the goddamn car? You know, it it just bothers him to me that there there is clearly an asymmetric media fight going on. Mm -hmm. And we on the left cannot interest anyone who has the capacity to do so to give a shit about anyone below their pay grade who they don't know personally. You can't get them the hell out of LA and DC and New York to talk about the Midwest, which is, you know, 80% of where we're at. And if you want to, if you want to complain about how poorly represented liberals are in the Midwest, I would agree with you. But if you'd like to start, you know, making little inroads, find the people who are already there, who are already doing the work and bring them some love. I am not asking anyone out there, you have to listen to every show. That's not it. Supporting us is really appreciated because we're doing this all the time. We are. And it is a job. And and as Keith Olbermann says about the dogs that he supports, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. retweets are appreciated. Uh Retweets are appreciated. And you know what? If if I would I would appreciate a retweet from Keith Olbermann. Yeah. I would appreciate just the minimal amount of effort. That yeah, it, it, yeah. To, just to say, for, you know, for, honestly, from any of the person, not not necessarily for us, but from for anyone on whatever the hell's left of the liberal cadre on MSNBC. Right. I know you all have your own podcast. I know you're all interested in promoting your own podcast because mm-hmm. everybody has a podcast. But I don't see the people who rose up through the ranks to become those people really kind of promoting the second and third tier of people. I see a lot mm-hmm. of activists out there and that's great. But the once in a blue moon, you will see Josh Marshall. Yeah. On MSNBC. And it, we run into the living room. It's like there's an actual liberal on TV. <gasps> Amazing. Come quick. There's Wonderful. A on TV. Yeah. And yeah. it's and it's fine. It is, you know, within Sam the Sam Cedar, rumble. same thing when he has Sam yeah. Cedar on. Sam Cedar's on. Oh my God. You know, it's yeah, four in the morning yeah. and we're both tired. Yeah. Oh, wake up, honey. Wake up. Sam Cedar's <laughs> going to be on for four minutes on the Chris Hayes show. But here's the problem. I have pretty much stopped watching Chris Hayes. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm not getting anything out of it. And so if Sam Cedar does show up. Well, and it's w- now an off election year too. I mean, that, yeah. that is a big part of it. Yeah. We've just been through the midterms. The house Republicans are a clown show shit show. Yeah. You can't have that on 24 seven. You just can't. No, but I don't, I, there are other things I listen to and other things I pay attention to. Right, right. But you know what? Once they started putting Greta Van Susteren and Hugh Hewitt on MSNBC and begging people like me to watch them, I'm like, you guys really, really don't give a shit about us. You don't give a shit about your audience. Yeah. Yeah. The liberal audience isn't big enough for you. Yeah. Yeah. And they're failing. All right. We've got stuff, other stuff to talk about. Uh, We want you all to meet Tim Hulskamp. He's a venture capitalist and private equity guy, primarily focused on the tech industry, who lives and works in the greater Chicago area. I know, but uh, I know where that is. <laughs> back in 2017, Tim co-founded 1440 Media LLC, which markets itself as, quote, news without motives. Yeah. And your daily newsletter for unbiased reporting, edited to be as unbiased as humanly possible. It's not biased, Drift Glass. It's just news. So you centrists out there, you know, listen up because you finally <laughs> got the news that's been completely desaturated of any context whatsoever. Yeah. So Drift Glass went over and checked this out and found that it's a news aggregator, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, they pitch themselves as straight shooters. You know, well, what is that other one? Uh, Real news or there's, you know, we look at yeah. both sides and and put a Fox link next to an NBC link and consider yeah. that balanced. Right? Well, and that's that's, you know, Matt Taibbi's book just before he yeah. went off the deep end was Hate Incorporated. Uh-huh. There's a picture yeah. of Rachel Maddow and, and Sean Hannity, Hannity on the cover, right, right. red and blue. Um, yeah, they, and they, they pitch themselves as straight shooters. Uh, they give you the news uh, from all sides, or they elevate that view from nowhere to the status of a commandment brought down the mountain by Moses. You know, this mm-hmm. never, never take a side, never contextualize anything. This we, we don't even exist as humans. This is just an AI speaking news that it gathered from some source. And uh, well, you and know, so like, then there was a tweet this week from them. And it had uh, 1440, come visit our website. We've got news like you remember it being. This is the kind of news that, you know, Walter Cronkite is back. Yeah. There this was is a, your Walter Cronkite news. There was a cute blonde lady in a black turtleneck in the ad. I stopped watching the news a year ago. So sick of bias everywhere. I decided to give 1440 a try. Finally, Walter Cronkite style reporting, unquote. Now, you and I are old enough to remember watching Walter Cronkite at six o'clock every night. Well, and and remember that that's that commercial. Mm -hmm. I'm I stopped it because it was horrible. I'm sick of the blah, blah, blah. But then I tried this new product and it was delicious and nice (laughs) is the template for every painkiller and dick pill and weight loss detergent ad ever written. I'd given up on getting my wife's truly white until I decided to give dicks of steel a try. (laughs) Well, and overnight, my bunions have all but disappeared, Blue yeah, Gal. See? It's the miracle see? cure you've been looking for. <laughs> it's like that, but for news, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's not why I, I mean, that in itself is enough for me to have yeah. sent that to you and said, sure. this is podcastable. Oh, yeah. However, yeah. <laughs> what happened was uh, we read the replies to this <laughs> Twitter ad for 1440. And that's utterly- when I said, oh, Drift Glass. Yeah. Um. The, the number of people replying to it with, well, let me just read some of the replies here. Uh, me too. I do watch Newsmax, but not hours and hours. Yeah. Walter Cronkite was a lefty. After the Tet Offensive, the North Vietnamese were ready to talk peace until they saw old Walt go on and on. Uh, Old Walt go on and on about how the Tet Offensive was a complete disaster for us. So Walter Cronkite lost Vietnam. For he America. did. Single-handedly lost Vietnam. Congratulations, Walter. Walter Cronkite was a communist and biased as hell. Do some research. Walter Cronkite, not only do most people not know who old Walt was, it's like saying Dan Rather is an unbiased journalist. We've been gaslit for decades and it isn't going to end anytime soon. And then uh, Karen Nicole 323 America First MAGA extremist. Is, is that how she described herself? Yes, I guess that's so. how she. Oh, no, I don't make yeah. any of this stuff oh, up on you. You didn't make I don't this need up. To. That's what she put on there. OK, uh-huh. I could be wrong, but this sounds like typical Democrat slash socialist gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, I watch Newsmax, but not hours and hours, so. not hours and hours. <laughs> no. Well, you and I watch Newsmax every couple of, you know, we do a little for, steeple. For a minute, over. we read the Chiron and then switch over to something mm-hmm. else. The Food Network. <laughs> well, and this is this is why, um, you know, uh, first of all, let me just say as a as an aside, um, the best Joe Walsh podcasts are apparently late at night with a belly full of tequila. Joe Walsh <laughs> podcast. You told me that you thought he was drunk podcasting. I, I it's my opinion. I could be wrong, uh, but you know, it's it was twenty minutes of, you know, here's the thing. He's talking to his his friend in the microphone. My friendly microphone. Let me tell you, my friend. Everybody says Trump is dead, and he wrote him off. All the experts say it. MSNBC says it. CNN says it. everybody says it. Everybody says Trump. No, he's there's no chance he'll ever. Su- everybody says it, but not me. Not me. I'm telling you, everybody's saying is write him off. I'm saying you got to take him seriously, and here's why. And he goes on and on and on about why Donald Trump might win the nomination and how every expert in America has said otherwise without citing a single expert anywhere who has said anything to that effect because he wants to be the guy who's right and everyone else is wrong. And it was this kind of long and rambly thing that he does 
when he wants to make a point about how how smart and right he is and how literally everyone else doesn't, the left doesn't understand and the right says they're crazy. The only person you can trust is me right here in the middle telling you what all the experts are saying and doing without any citation from anyone. And it isn't what experts are saying. Um, but one of his pet peeves, he was on Mr. with Mr. Bob Seska, who's a friend of the pod. Joe Walsh insists that there once was upon a time uh, the liberal media. The liberal media, you know, all the reporters in the media were liberal. Almost all of them were. And you just can't have a media like that without that bias showing up. Even though people go to school for journalism and they get, they get schooled in never letting their bias show when they report. And this is why he's full of it. Because even Walter Cronkite is a filthy communist. <laughs> Because Walter Cronkite, they they judge the efficacy of media by how how much they vomit up right wing talking points. It's only fair. It's only balanced. It's only true. It's only being up the middle. As long as I can hear every other sentence is full of my fucking psychotic conspiracy theories and and hating Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi's a communist and Hillary Clinton murdered people. Unless I hear that shit coming out of the radio. Oh, it's all liberal media. And they've programmed themselves not to listen to anyone who won't tell them what they want to hear. So when someone says, no, 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 don't worry. This is not going to be biased at all. It's going to be right up the middle. Well, that sounds like communism to me. Because if that means up the middle, they're not going to be repeating the fact that Pizzagate was real, blue gal. And George Soros controls everything, blue gal. And if I don't hear that on my radio, then obviously I'm listening to a communist broadcast in the land of the free here, and we're all being gaslit, and we're all doomed. And well, and Drift Class, I, I have to confess that uh -huh. in the past, I have thought that your claim about reprogrammable meat bags was a little bit extreme. Cruel and excessive, yes. Well, just, it, it's it's a trope, and it's not quite dehumanizing them, but it just seemed a little bit over the top. It, yeah. And then I watched Jordan Klepper. <laughs> this week, interview Trumpers on the street mm -hmm. who were attending Donald Trump's leadership, whatever it is. Not a rally. It's not a rally. But uh, he just interviews them and takes what they say at face value. Right. And so he interviewed these two women with white hair and I'm a Trump girl T-shirts with the big high heel, red, white and blue high heel on the T-shirt. Uh-huh. And... Like many of the people in South Carolina for Trump, uh, they believe that Donald Trump is actually still president and yes. he is actually uh, running the military, which is the most important part of government. Sure, of course. And so, you know, Jordan asked them, well, OK, so we have Donald Trump to thank for sending tanks over to Ukraine. Oh, no, no, no. D Donald Trump wouldn't do that. Yeah. No. So, uh who is sending tanks over to Ukraine? Well, Biden, you know, the, so there are two militaries. Right. Well, yeah, there are two military, the bad one and the good one. Yeah, that's right. And you cannot, I mean, they take themselves seriously saying that. Sure they do. Yeah. So, I know people like that. So do you. And you were telling me about a guy at the leadership conference in a hat, <laughs> right? Yes, I was. Yeah. Well, and, and people have probably seen this YouTube, but... Uh, he was saying that Donald Trump 2024 is going to, how is he going to be different? That's what he was asked from t Donald Trump 2020. Well, more mature. He's listening to people. Mm -hmm. He's going to elevate the discourse. Right. The discourse is going to be elevated. Sure. And then uh, Jordan said, well, what's on your hat? I could shit a better president. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's Joe funny because I had that, I had that phrase on my mind during the Trump administration. Right. So we have but something in common. <laughs> but that's the point being, I don't try to be elevated. Right. I don't right. pretend to be elevated. I don't pretend to speak for Joe Joseph Robinette Biden. I, I like a lot of what he does, some of which, you know, gives me beef, but I don't I don't speak for him. And this whole idea that we're gonna change the flavor profile of Donald Trump. <laughs> we're gonna add some Calabrian chilies and we're gonna, you know, some nice crispy rice. And we're going to really elevate the shit basket we're that is Bobby the Republican Party. We're going to Bobby Flay Donald Trump, right, is right. what you're saying. Yeah. And, and we're going to win because people will love the flavor now. And the, I, I did not come up with the phrase reprogrammable meat bag. All humans are meat bags, right? Right. All humans. We are. All we human are. beings are bags of meat. Yeah. And they are reprogrammable, are they not? Many of us are. Yes. And, and so if you put the two together, 
are Republicans reprogrammable? Yes, they are. You can see it happening in real time over the last decades, ever since we've been following politics. Are they meatbags? Yes, they are. All, we all are. Therefore, they are, in fact, reprogrammable meatbags, which I realize sounds harsh and insulting, um, but it also happens to be 100% true. And it, it when you start off with the premise that these are reasonable people then or under there somewhere, there's some spark of conscience or you can, you can get to them somehow, you reach a radically different conclusion than, no, they're lost. They're just all going to march as a single goose-stepping fascist army, listening to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of right-wing media outlets all telling them the same thing um, right off a cliff. And all right, but you, I have a question for you about that. Sure. One of the things that I noticed about that that video of, uh -huh. you know, Jordan Klepper fingers the pulse. Right. Um, and him interviewing all these people is, and I know I've talked to you about this before, the the clothing that they wear, mm -hmm. buttons and and Trump glitter and <clears throat> T-shirts and hats, right. the hat, you know, whether it's I could shit a better president or make America great again or whatever. It's all of, wearing these symbols. And I know they're going to what they don't call a convention and they don't call a rally. They're calling it a leadership forum. Right. That way they don't have to have any expectation of crowd size. <laughs> right. That's what, that's what this was about. This is the think tank end of the, of the <laughs> project. Well, I, I think it's the beginning of the pyramid scheme, which is yeah. you get yeah. people who at this point in time are willing to travel to South Carolina for Trump. Mm -hmm. And you see, you you're planting the seed of we need to get people to give money. Yeah, and you've got your and you're going to be the in the leadership council for that. That's right. You know, by you sending are. emails to all your friends and mm -hmm. giving us your email addresses and so forth. Um, but but the the clothing and and the absolute desire to symbolize your belonging to this madman to this con man. I belong to him. I'm a Trump girl. I'm I'm a MAGA. I'm a whatever. Is just something that, and I guess it's now 28% instead of 37% of the Republican Party that, you know, DeSantis or whoever is going to peel off some of them because they don't see Trump winning is the problem. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the psychology of needing to belong, and you and I talked about this when we were traveling and seeing people in sports jerseys. And wondering why can't, if you need to belong to something, you know, if you really need to label yourself and belong to something, it's far less dangerous to our democracy to belong to the Chicago Cubs or the, you know, whatever Super Bowl team you want to support. Put the jersey on, put the hat on, put the bumper stickers on, go for it. And no one is going to pull out a gun and kill you for it, we hope. Mm -hmm. Unlike this... This, I don't know what else to call it except a pathology. Well, it, you know, I was thinking the other day that <clears throat> politics is the perfect con consumable item because it, it's the everlasting gobstopper. Mm -hmm. in, in American politics now, if you are on the right, you are free to be a complete idiot and have lots of dumb opinions and hate and, and have a target for all of your hatred. It's the government and everyone who supports the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can have all kinds of dumb opinions and conspiracies, and you can find people to validate them who live within your your ecosystem. And you never have, and unlike sports, you never lose. Really, mm -hmm. you never lose because right. your team's always winning, or always on the verge of winning, or always just around the corner. They're going to win some more. And the people who are it's it's um, Emmanuel Goldstein from 1984. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the enemy is always the Jew. Being, yeah, the, right. The Jew. Right. There's always right. the sinister one who's always foiling your plans. It's always just out of your reach and always just around the corner. And he's really behind everything. He's George Soros. The woke agenda, string. Drift Glass. Yeah. The woke agenda. Yeah. And and so it's a perfect game to for bigots and imbeciles to play because they can blame everything on those people. They can take no responsibility for learning anything, how anything works, how the government works, how the filibuster works, how majorities work, how voting works. They can just say, well, you know, the, the election was stolen because it had to have been stolen. Right. right. And uh, again, unlike sports, there are no consequences to being wrong, to losing, because you never lose. You never really lose. And it's an infinitely renewing resource. Every victory means you were right. Every defeat means the enemy is even it was more stolen. sinister. Yeah. 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 And all you are around all day long are people who tell you that you're right. 
And so, and because, but that's the thing. It's also the very fertile field for con men. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, it's the perfect feeding ground for and that. crazy pe- And crazy people. I'm not yeah. sure what Carrie Lake is at this point, whether she's completely lost her damn mind or she's just very cynically running for Trump's vice presidential slot. Oh, and the way you do that is stop the steal, stop the steal. Don't don't make me choose, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I wanted to um, mention a couple of things that uh, we are not dealing with very competent leadership in the Republican House. No, no, no. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is on a committee now. She's on the House Oversight Committee, and she had uh, some educator on the, the stand under oath. And she proceeded to ask him about CRT, and he just said, what? <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, this education official that she was talking to genuinely didn't know what she was talking about because she was speaking in Newsmax, Steve Bannon buzzwords. Yeah. And he just said, I'm sorry, what, what are you talking about? And she said, well, critical race theory, it's where uh, teachers make white students feel bad. <laughs> right. And he said, the money that you're talking about, you know, I'm, all this money's going to drag queens and CRT, isn't it? And he said, the, the money that you're talking about doesn't go to curriculum. And I don't know what you were talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, she came out with the number of $5.1 billion going to an elementary school in Illinois. Yeah. Also, Republicans accidentally gave Democrats a supermajority on the Weaponization of Government Committee. They were supposed to be 21 members on this committee, nine of which would be Democrats, but someone typed 12 instead of 21. So uh, three-fourths of the members of this committee at the moment are Democrats. Yeah, which is um, awesome. Awesome. And you were saying uh, the other day that they should act very quickly to- They um, should act very secure. quickly to elect a chairman. Yes. Yeah, and to start <laughs> hearings right away. Let's start go, let's go. hearings right away. <laughs> they don't need any of the Republicans to show up to have a quorum because there's nine of them out right. of 12. Right. They're a quorum. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Lock the doors. And then uh, finally, I don't know if you noticed this this morning, um, uh, Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, had a uh, announcement of some kind where he had broad brand, rural broad brand. <laughs> rural. Isn't that. Wait a minute. Isn't that a 30 Rock episode? The rural juror. Rural, the rural juror. broad brand. Yeah. Rural broad brand. Yes. Okay. That, and that is, was on the sign behind him. <laughs> that's a strip club uh, <laughs> in South Florida. Broad brand. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. You probably know Sam Bankman Freed as that pasty weirdo who's now in jail for conducting a massive crypto fraud that made him, for a very short time, a billionaire. And now I'm going to quote from Wikipedia. Prior to FTX's collapse, Bankman Freed was ranked the 41st richest person in America, in the Forbes 400, and the 60th richest person in the world uh, by the world's billionaires. His net worth peaked at $26 billion in October 2022, and he had an estimated net worth of $10.5 billion by November of 2022. Amid the bankruptcy of FTX, his net worth was estimated to have dropped 94% in a day <laughs> to $991.5 million, which is still a lot of money. According Wait to Bloomberg, it, I thought that was with the Illinois Elementary School. They got oh half no, of that. Sam Bankman Freed. Okay. Yeah. They, well, he, you know, he, that's where his all his money went. It went to CRT, <laughs> teaching CRT at elementary at a, school in Illinois. At Just a, one. A single, a single, very now very impressive and powerful elementary school in <laughs> Illinois. Um, this is this was recorded as the largest one day drop in the index's history. So he went real broke real fast. What you may not know about this criminal was his role in funding a project to drag the Democratic Party to the right, because he's a libertarian. Uh, Now I'm quoting from The Nation magazine. Sam Bankman-Fried can be understood as one of the chief financiers of reactionary centrism. Yeah, we've discussed reactionary centrism once or twice or 100 times over the last 13 years. In early January, the progressive strategist Max Berger posted a deeply researched investigation into the year-end Federal Election Commission filings on his substack, Party Time. Berger's inquiry helps clarify the reactionary centrist network. Poring over the filings, Berger found more evidence SBF, that's Sam Bankman-Fried, 
was collaborating with APAC and Trump supporting billionaires to stop the growth of the squad and the electoral left. Further, SBF wasn't primarily funding groups that helped Democrats defeat Republicans. According to FEC data, over 75% of the money he contributed to the Democrats in 2022 went to groups that spent nearly all of their money on competitive primaries in the Democratic Party. Now, but isn't this exactly what every single Never Trumper balled out Democrats for doing in the other direction? Yes, it is. Putting money into not their Primary own races. primaries, yep. but screwing around because they wanted to change the outcome. By the way, uh, the, the money the Democrats spent on those primaries, very well invested. Yep. It all worked out great for off. us. It paid it's, off. It paid off, you know, 10 times, 10 times over. But yeah, this guy who was a billionaire by being a crypto fraud spent a big chunk of his money um, trying to make the Democratic Party into David Brooks's dream of a Democratic Party, which mm -hmm. is Republican light. And that's where the money goes. Because when you got that kind of money, you really don't want your taxes raised or the Medicare program funded or Medicaid, don't really care about Social Security. What you care about are your tax cuts and deregulation and more tax cuts. That seems to segue very easily into a discussion of Rick Wilson and the Forward Party. Oh, I'm... yeah, 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 yeah. Just skip um, right into that. Well, as you know, Blue Gal, I have heroically fought against talking about the Lincoln Lads for many, <laughs> many weeks now. <laughs> and And I have kept my mouth shut, sort of, about the Forward Party scam, but those two worlds have now collided. Really? Are and they finding are they finding comfort in each other's hearts? In each other in each other's warm embrace. Um and now <laughs> that they have found each other, honey, I'm only human. Okay. Yeah, I know. I, I can I, I can know. only take so much, but when these worlds collide and they, they find each other you have and to they start, say something. Yes. I, I'm obliged to. People will think, what's wrong with Drift Class? What happened mm -hmm. to Drift Class? Has he mm -hmm. lost his mind? So uh Rick Wilson, uh, as you know, he's one of the Lincoln lads, um, and has his own podcast now. Which is shocking. You're this, kidding. Oh, I know. It's it's crazy. Mr. Personality Rick Wilson has his yeah. own podcast. Is he sitting on his cooler with the Confederate flag sticker on it? Uh, you can't tell over the microphone, but I think in his heart he really is. <laughs> um, and uh, I learned, I, I, I didn't listen to lots and lots of it because uh, he kind of sets my teeth on edge. Mm -hmm. um, he's good at swearing. He's good at hating people. He's very, very good at that. Um, but I learned a few things about Rick Wilson's um, oeuvre. And then okay. in comes the forward party. The first is uh, I am confirmed in all of my um, <laughs> predictions about the Lincoln Project that despite the fact they didn't move a single goddamn vote in the 2020 election, despite the fact they didn't exist when Democrats um, took back the House and the Senate in 2018, I'm sorry, just the House in 2018, despite those things, um, the Lincoln Project still believes that they are the ones who saved America. This is a quote from the introduction of his podcast. One thing we proved at the Lincoln Project was a small group of very determined people could change the tide of history. <laughs> so so as, as the Lincoln Project's budgets have gotten smaller, his ego has gotten much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, they single-handedly saved American democracy from the appalling, the blah, 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 blah. It wasn't the tens of millions of Democrats that organized and been organizing for decades. It wasn't people on the ground knocking doors and ringing bells. It wasn't people, uh, the Women's March. It certainly wasn't those people. It was just the Lincoln Project who almost single-handedly did it. By and that's themselves. why Susan Collins is just a history lesson right. now, uh, right? Uh, who's ever heard of uh, Lindsey Graham anymore now that he's yeah, gone? Uh, didn't, he, didn't they just flatten everyone that they wanted they to did. flatten? They One did, hand tied right? behind their back. Um, <laughs> And I said something in my post about credulous liberals who swore they were betting down with Kevin Costner only to wake up with slipping Jimmy McGill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. did they learn the lesson? No, they did not. No, they did not. Um, but, and, and he's got this new thing called uh, called the, the enemies list. And the enemies list is him every week putting someone else on the enemies list. And these are just a few of the blurbs. Uh, he, he speaks his mind. Uh, he 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 goes on and does stern warnings, uh, or sometimes he just and these are all just quotes from his own blurbs. Sometimes he just goes off. Guess who's on the enemies list? Listen this week to find out which two people have been added to the enemies list, and that's his thing. Internet tough guy. Um, <laughs> okay, and, I think we've given him enough advertising. But what really caught my attention was a show that some helpful listener, who I will not name, 
curse you and curse you and curse you for, for <laughs> curse you for this. sending this to drift glass um rick wilson's interview uh not left or right but forward oh Lord. an interview with forward party founder and and the thing about it is the thing about it is it's funny because in the beginning they start off saying that uh, this is the this is the co-founder Miles this Taylor. Is Andrew Yang? No, it's not Andrew. Miles Yang. Taylor, uh, Miles Taylor, whose previous position was working for the Trump administration in the Homeland Security Department. And so, now you know, he's, he's a forward party. He's, guy. he's a co-founder of the forward party. He's a oh, co-founder. Um, what they really want to do, I'm quoting him now, is is run genuinely independent candidates, especially in places that are not competitive. So so, and he's very specific. Think deep red districts where MAGA has a chokehold over an area of the country where Democrats have no hope of beating an extremist. And he makes very clear that they're going after the, the places that are locked up. And he, he quotes this, this statistic that 70% of all the elections in the country are uncontested. And 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 it's it's that's always put right next to the, and we're going after the MAGA red districts because we, you know, we don't want them to have a super majority, right? But that's just bullshit because there are 16 incumbents in Congress that, uh, ran unopposed. And there are That's not 70%. No, right. it is an order of magnitude less. He's talking about literally every election in the country. You know, water oh, like reclamation, water reclamation district. district and stuff yeah. like that. City council, oh. school boards. So, which is fine, except he keeps pretending that what he's talking about are those red districts. And there's an acknowledgement uh, that, you know, right now, one party, the Republican Party, my former party, are the bad guys. And we at the forward party aren't stupid enough to think there's just from both sides do it stuff. So we know that we're, we have to team up with the good guys who are at the moment the Democratic Party. And they all sort of nod their heads and nod their heads. And, you know, that's that's great. We don't want to be spoilers. We don't want to do that. Um, and then comes towards the end of the podcast when their programming kicks back in, they start talking about, the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. <laughs> and the extremes on both sides have to be taken into consideration. And, you know, this sort of thing. Rick Wilson, there's this frustration growing. And it's a frustration that both parties, you know, have a responsibility that both parties have become this sort of like code worded only. Burger King versus McDonald's. It's Coke versus Pepsi. The ritual bullshit he talks about on the right. And look, the squad is the other side of this. Oh, it stop. plays a similar and then he stops himself because he hears himself in his head saying what he's saying, knowing that I'm listening. Yes, he's he on... knows Drift Class is listening to this bullshit and is and you know what I've done? on it. What? I put him on the enemies list, Blue Gal. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the enemies list. <laughs> and so mid-sentence, when he's very clearly going through a false equivalence, he stops and says, well, I'm not a both siders of guy. I'm really not. But as a former Republican strategist, let me just tell you that the squad is a gift to the Republican Party. And yeah, they are, because you have a giant conservative media machine that makes them the gift to the Republican Party, who takes things out of context. Who amp And Rick knows this because Rick was that machine. He built that machine. So they start off with this great pitch to, you know, we, we're, we want to do independent stuff. We want to change the way we do things in this country, but we're not crazy. We know the Democrats are the party that are going to beat Republicans. And they just can't help themselves and loop slowly back into, you know, it really is both parties. And yeah. they really are yeah. both to blame. And they really They're are lazy. both responsible. This is laziness is what this is. And I'm I, sorry. Without, it just is. Well, it's programming. This yeah. is this is in the wiring. Rick Wilson can't keep it out of his head long enough that he is no longer a Republican hitman. And so the reflex to to go back to both sides do it and both siderism, et cetera, is is wired into the board. And so you get them talking long enough and eventually, boom, the both siderism will come out. Hey, Drift Class, there's some other new developments in the media that I think are just worthy of mention. Go. Uh, CNN has hired old, unfunny, tired, reactionary, both siderist Bill Maher to be not funny on CNN. Yeah, he's, he's really good at that. And he is dead to me since he had Milo Yiannopoulos on. Yeah. Yeah. Who, by the way, Milo made forty thousand dollars off of Kanye West. Really? Yeah, this year, this past year, wow. uh, doing something like campaign shutdown or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's on an FEC filing. Forty thousand dollars to Milo Yiannopoulos. Congratulations. Well, 
And I wanted to mention in the media also, as I wrote today, in addition to being Laura Ingram's occasional political Hitachi wand, <laughs> and Tucker Carlson's frequent political fleshlight, uh, Glenn Greenwald now has his own padded cell on Rumble. Oh, my God. Um, which you might know as a uh, right-wing platform that caters to the alt-right and is the host of Truth Social. Um, he's got his own show on there. And his guest today, if you want to catch up with us, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, is an hour with Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. She gets around. She does. She really does. And he really likes people like this now. He really loves snuggling up with them and making friends with them and putting them on his podcast for an hour to talk about populism's future in Washington. And so anybody who still wants to call me drone glass and an idiot and a obot and a bootlicking fascist, please go ahead and line up and do so. I have a post on my blog. Go ahead and come on over. Call me crazy for pointing out years ago that Glenn Greenwald was a fraud and a hack and was not our friend. Um, but, you know, no sour grapes here, Blue Gal. I'll just put him. <laughs> but you know you lost a third of your traffic because you said Glenn Greenwald is not our friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I made up for it because you know, where, you know where he is now, Blue Gal? You know where he is now? He's on Rumble. He's on the enemies list, Blue Gal. <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> yes, he's on my enemies he's, list. You're not. You're not. Oh, he's on your enemies list. Oh yeah, no, I have it at long enemies list. Blue on Rick Wilson's enemies list? I bet no, he's not. No, no, he's he's beneath. They, they travel in totally separate cosmoses at no, this point. No, but they'll meet up at Politicon. You watch. Oh, <laughs> see, there's part of me wants to go just once to see the freak show. <laughs> the part of me knows in my imagination. I can imagine exactly what this freak show is like oh, for yeah, nothing, yeah, for no money. Yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah. We can't afford the, Politicon Drift Glass. No. Honey, we can't afford not to. <laughs> um, hey, you know we what? have to do a news roundup, Drift Let's Glass. Let's do a news roundup. After you, darling. A sixth Memphis police officer has been relieved of duty for his involvement in the beating and subsequent death of Tyree Nichols by police officers. Five black officers have been fired by the department and charged with second-degree murder and kidnapping in connection with Nichols' death. Uh, the sixth officer, Preston Hemphill has been suspended from duty and has not been charged. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to talk about it. Yeah, fine. And fine. and that's not a complaint. No. Um, but I certainly, my thoughts are with his mother. His yeah. Seemed like a very sweet man. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Who said, quote, deleted my WinRed account. Time to let them know we do have a voice. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. We do. Lauren Boebert. No. No, she no. would never do that. Think uh, more Clinton-era scandal. Oh, someone in the Clinton era is on Win Red? Well, not in the Clinton camp, not a friend oh. of Bill Clinton, but a, you know, Who is a it? Juanita Broderick. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she's still around. She's still kicking. She's still uh, hanging on to the spotlight. But with she's, her, uh... she's canceled her Win Red account. Right. She's figured out that, you know. We do yeah. have a voice. And, you know, she, <laughs> she like, uh, like Rick Wilson, she has changed the tide of history, Blue Gal. Uh, so. Um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. From the New York Times, after heavy criticism from Governor Ron DeSantis, the College Board released on Wednesday an official curriculum for its new advanced placement course in African American studies, stripped of much of the subject matter that had angered the governor and other conservatives. Mm-hmm. The College Board purged the names of many black writers and scholars associated with critical race theory, the queer experience, and black feminism. It ushered out some politically fraught topics like Black Lives Matter. Why have Black Lives Matter in the curriculum, Drift Glass? It makes people uncomfortable, Blue Gal. Who? <laughs> you know, and, and I think Keith Olbermann, I'm going to come back to him. He had a really good idea, which is colleges should just say, well, we're just not going to do AP anymore. Right. We're not going to accept AP. that as credit. And certainly... HBCUs should say, we're not accepting this. We're not accepting this crap the as an scholarship. actual curriculum yeah. that gets you college credit. Mm -hmm. And I think the students should still sue. Oh, and it also, um, the college board, you know, because being a total coward isn't enough. They also added something new. Black conservatism is offered as an idea for a research project. You know, so that you know, they'll pay you to go to CPAC uh, if I you're have, black. I have many ideas for a research project <laughs> black on black conservatism, conservatism, which I will not mention at this time. But <laughs> if you buy me a beer, 
or two, <laughs> maybe a scotch in the future, I will explain to you in great detail what I think of black conservatism. I just want to mention that from M this is from MSNBC or NBC rather. Trump revamps his fundraising operation after struggling to raise money for 2024. In numbers shared exclusively with NBC News, the former president raised $9.5 million over the final six weeks of 2022, less than he raised the six weeks before his launch. So, womp, womp. but he's a billionaire. He can fund himself. He doesn't need $9. that $9.5 million. Can no. you imagine? Yeah, I ha can. Having that much money? I, 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 I can. <laughs> um, you know, all, but you know, Bernard Blue Gal, there is an elementary school somewhere in Illinois that's sitting <laughs> that's on billions, fifty-one billion dollars. <laughs> so I say, school teacher, this is this is. <laughs> I've always dreamed of teaching at a school where everything is plated in gold and platinum and jewels. If um, that kind of money landed in our lap, you'd be running right over to your community organizing group and going, "Hey, how, what can we do to help this community grow and build and be safe?" I know. I, I, I'm sorry to say most of that money would slip right through my fingers and go yeah. to workforce development, childhood yeah. development, homeless projects, writers camps, um, yeah. all kinds of terrible, terrible things. That, terrible uh, nonprofit, make yeah. the world a better place stuff. That's what we'd be doing. All right. But they're, they're giving it away to, to fund Donald Trump's 2024 presidential campaign. All right. Arizona's top election official has asked the attorney general to investigate Carrie Lake. <laughs> who one of my colleagues at Chris and Liars, Conover, she gets a ribbon for this. She called Carrie Lake a low-rent Leona Helmsley with a filter. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. And very true. Uh, the she's the Republican candidate who lost, lost her bid for governor in 2022. She lost. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they want to investigate her over potential campaign violations involving the disclosure and actually photography of voter signatures, which is illegal. Speaking of law enforcement, the Federal Bureau of Investigation conducted what's called a planned search of Joe Biden's house in Delaware and didn't find any documents with classified markings. This was a planned search. There was no subpoena. It was, in, it was come on in, boys, and check it all out. I want to make sure we got everything. Uh, Biden's lawyer said the FBI did take some materials and handwritten notes that appeared to relate to his tenure as vice president. I'm sure they were hot, sexy notes to his wife about how much he loves her and how gorgeous she is. And bring me some and ice a cream. note back from her staff saying, leave her lo alone. Leave we've her got alone. stuff we've got to get done today. Look, just, just, they used to hide her from him. Yeah. Because where is she? Because the vice president's wife's office, she was doing stuff for military families uh -huh. and had meetings. Yeah, and, he's, and if he and saw he's, her and wanted smoochy smooch, he's he's Gomez Adams, you know. <laughs> Jill, you spoke French. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't get what anything done if he saw her. Doctor Biden is not here. Jill's not here, man. The Supreme Court didn't disclose its longstanding financial ties with the person tasked with independently validating the investigation into the leaked draft opinion overturning Roe v. Wade. It was Sam Alito, everybody. It was Sam Alito in the library with a with a candlestick. <laughs> Get this. This is an amazing story. The court consulted with former Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff to assess yeah. the investigation, which failed to identify who was responsible for the unprecedented leak. Can you imagine? The court, however, has paid Chertoff's consulting firm at least one million dollars. There's that million word again, Driftclad. Yeah, I know. To improve the justice's security. The exact amount couldn't be determined because the Supreme Court isn't covered by federal public disclosure rules. Yeah. Why would they be? They're above all that. They're, uh -huh. they're, they're gods, Blue Gal. They're nine gods. They rule over us benevolently. Just don't pay attention. Everything will be fine. Uh, the Biden administration proposed ending a Trump era exemption that allowed employer provided health plans to exclude coverage of birth control on moral grounds. While the proposed rule would leave in place the existing religious exemption for employers with objections, it would create an independent pathway for individuals to access contraceptive services without charge. That's Hobby Lobby. Yeah, that's who we're talking about. It's the and Hobby Lobby. We never Lobby. go to Hobby Lobby, do we? Nope. No, we do oh, not. We never do. We drive past and scowl at them a lot we on don't. our way to Chick fil A, right, Blue Gal? Right, right, right. I, I buy yarn. I'm a yarn buyer. And yes, I you do are. not go to Hobby Lobby. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. All right. 
I hate to mention his name again, but Donald Trump called Ron DeSantis very disloyal. I don't even give a shit. I'm not. (laughs) Moving on. The U.S. economy expanded at 2.9% annualized rate in the fourth quarter last year, beating expectations despite high interest rates and fear of a recession. For the year overall, GDP grew 2.1% after growing 5.7% in 2021. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, 73% of Americans, you probably know some of them, say House Republican leaders haven't paid enough attention to the country's most important problems, which everyone knows are Hunter Biden's laptop. 67% disapprove of Republican leadership in Congress. Maybe they should get out and vote next time. Yeah, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Luna. Luna's owner is in Oregon and writes, here is Luna posing with a pair of knitted snowmen I knit for my granddaughters for Christmas. Aww. Between writing postcards to voters and knitting up a storm, my hands were busy this year. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Of course, Luna eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor, whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct. Your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. If you send us an internet pet, please put internet kitty in the subject line of your email. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is just a 24-7 thing at our house that we do (laughs) all the time. It is. And it is our full-time job. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Legal, the Internet Kitties do not take weather advice from goddamn groundhogs. Delicious, delicious groundhogs. Hey, let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. A professional left podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2023 DGBG Productions.